Hello friends, this is Jim with Science Talk. I wanted to share with you something very interesting. Here's the title that I want to share with you. Those 3% of scientific papers that deny climate change? A review found them all flawed. It is often said that of all the published scientific research on climate change, 97% of the papers conclude that global warming is real, problematic for the planet, or at least for human civilization, and humans are basically exacerbating what's going on. What about those 3% of papers that reach contrary conclusions? Some skeptics have suggested that the authors of studies indicating that climate change is not real, not harmful, and not man-made, are bravely standing up for the truth. So we're going to believe 3% over 97% of scientists. And we get often get accused that we have an agenda. Hmm? Our agenda is to analyze the data as best as we can, derive the appropriate logically deductive conclusion, and present our findings. That's what our objective, you know, objective is. That's what our agenda is. We don't... We're not sitting there going, oh, we want the planet to be warm. We want the planet to be cooling up. We're collecting the data. We analyze it. We present our findings. It's blowhards like Senator Inhofe and uh, uh, Drumpty Dumpty that, uh, and others of that ilk that sit there and basically have their heads up their back ends. <laughs> so these are maverick thinkers of blah, blah, blah. So basically, they're, they're trying to draw an analogy with Galileo. You see, these 3% are the real mavericks, they're the real, you know, going against everything, all this other established stuff. Well, the problem with Galileo is that he wasn't a maverick. Most of his fellow scientists agreed with his conclusion. It was the church who tried to suppress them. And let's be honest. Galileo had an ego, and he didn't know how to keep his mouth shut, so, and that's what got him in trouble. You know, he kind of liked to spout off a wee bit, and I'm sure he said a few Merry Christmases along the way, if you know my meaning. So, you know, there was a personality clash, and there was some pressure and by the Inquisition, so on and so forth. But the point is, Galileo wasn't really a maverick. Everyone, all the scientists of his, his colleagues, temporary of the day, were like going, yeah, yeah, sun's at the center, not the earth. So, according to a review published in the Journal of Theoretical and Applied Climatology, the researchers, now this is important, the researchers tried to replicate the results of those 3% of papers this is a common thing that is done in science. You know, this is why we write an extensive methodology section in our research paper. The point being that anyone who wanted to replicate the, the results, replicate out the experiment that was done, can do so and can arrive at simil uh, similar, if not exact, results. Okay. So when they try to replicate the results of those papers, they found biased, faulty results. Catherine Hayho, an atmospheric scientist at Texas Tech University, worked with a team of researchers to look at the 38 papers published in peer-reviewed journals in the last decade that denied anthropogenic global warming. Now, this is some well over 10,000 papers published. It's just been a lot of papers published. And 38 saying, uh-uh, no, humans aren't doing anything. Well, this is what she said. Every single one of those analyses had an error. Be it in their assumptions, methodology, or analyses that when corrected brought their results into line with the scientific consensus. Let me repeat that. Every single one of those analyses had an error in their assumptions, methodology, or analyses 
that when corrected brought their results into line with the scientific consensus. One of Hayhoe's co-authors, Rasmus Benestad, he's an atmospheric scientist at the Norwegian Meteorological Institute, built the program using the computer language R. The R is a, is a commonly used statistical uh, software program that uh, scientists uh, readily use, which conveniently works out uh, works on all computer uh, platforms, and he used that to replicate each of the paper's results and try to understand how they reached their conclusions. Benestad's program found that none of the papers had results that were replicable, at least not with generally accepted science. Okay. Broadly, there were three main errors. I made allusions to that, but let's look at them a little closer. In the papers denying climate change, many had cherry-picked the results that conveniently supported their conclusion. That right there is not science. So they cherry-picked their data while ignoring other contexts or records. Then there were some that applied inappropriate curve fitting. Curve fitting is where you try to fit a function to the data points. Linear regression, you fit a straight line. Curve a linear, you fit some sort of a function that may not be linear. It could be uh, uh, polynomic, it could be exponential, logarithmic, trigonometric, what have you. So they uh, applied inappropriate curve fitting in which they would step farther and farther away from data until the points match the curve of their choosing. In other words, let's just keep the data that doesn't fall on, on the curve we want, we'll just, keep, we'll just keep ignoring more and more of it until we get the curve we want. Having a predetermined uh, desired outcome is not science. I'll give you an example. Up here in Alaska, there's uh, the, the old uh, uh, ANWAR, Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, and that's been the center of debate for decades of whether to open it up to drilling and so on and so forth. So Congressman Don Young, mm -hmm, you have him, uh, he commissioned uh, Fish and Wildlife Service to conduct a study into will drilling, how will drilling impact the uh, porcupine caribou herd. Porcupine caribou herd migrates up to uh, Anwar every year to Coastal Plains specifically area uh, 1042 to have their calves and they feed on the uh, tundra vegetation and so on and so forth. Area 1042 abuts the Arctic Ocean. That's important for the caribou because when the mosquitoes are marauding them and they can lose uh, one to two pints of blood a day from the mosquitoes, they run into the ocean to get the hell away from them, get relief. Well, Fish and Wildlife Service uh, does their research, they, they, they do sound methodology, they do sound analyses of the data, present their findings, and they basically said, uh, yeah, this is going to be bad for the caribou. What was Don Young's reaction? This is a direct quote, and I kid you not. Wrong result, do it again. Seriously. That's what he said. And as I said, when you have politicians trying to fund, you know, determine what science to fund, what can go wrong with that, right? <laughs> so anyway, they were kind of basically messing with things here. And of course, sometimes the papers just ignored physics altogether. Well, that's convenient. Hey, you know, warm air holds more moisture. No, it doesn't. Senator Inhofe, oh, see the snowball here? It's, it's cold outside. Ain't no global warming. Yeah, it also dropped six feet of snow out there, which means uh, to drop that much snow there, you have to have hold more moisture in the atmosphere, which means, oh gosh, yeah, the air is warmer. We're just tilted away from the sun now, so it comes down to snow. Moron. <laughs> so, uh, there is a problem of scientific illiteracy in this nation. I'm serious. You know, 
from our educational system, which is in trouble, up to politicians and everything in between, there is scientific illiteracy, uh, illiteracy in this nation. Now, I'm not saying everyone should be a scientist, oh gosh, that would be boring and crazy, but everyone should have a fundamental understanding of basic scientific principles. So, anyway. In many cases, shortcomings are due to insufficient model evaluation, leading to results that are not universally valid, but rather are an artifact of a particular experimental setup the authors write. Those who assert that these papers are correct while the other 97% are wrong are holding up science where the researchers have already decided what results they sought. Predetermined. That's not how science works. The author of the review say, Good science is objective. It doesn't care what anyone wants the answers to be. Neil deGrasse Tyson has a quote. I'm trying to remember it now. Where he basically says, to the effect, oh God, I'm trying to remember this now. It has to deal with, you know, whether or not you want to believe the science, the science is fact. It's something to that effect. In other words, science doesn't care whether you think it's true or not. It's fact, and that's it. So this review serves as an answer to the charge that the minority view on climate change has been consistently suppressed, wrote Heho. It's a lot easier for someone to claim they've been suppressed than to admit that maybe they can't find the scientific evidence to support their political ideology. That maybe they can't find the scientific evidence to support their political ideology. They weren't suppressed. They're out there. Anyone can find them. Indeed, the review raises the question of how these papers came to be published in the first place when they use flawed methodology, which the rigorous peer review process is designed to weed out. Yeah, that was that's always been my thought, too, when I, you hear about flaw, go, how did this get through? How did the peer review process miss this? In an article for The Guardian, one of the researchers, Dana Nucatelli, points out another red flag with the climate change denying papers. There is no cohesive, consistent alternative theory to human-caused global warming, he writes. Some blame global warming on the sun, others on orbital cycles of other planets. Okay, yes, there is some evidence that if you get the planets lining up just so right, something could happen but it's minor. Now, uh, orbital uh, cycles, well, there is the Milankovitch cycle for planet Earth, and that does impact and affect climate. Others on ocean cycles, so on. True, okay, but you know what? The data doesn't support that. Not when you look at the, from a statistical point of view, not when you look at the contribution. There is a 97% expert consensus on a cohesive theory that's overwhelmingly supported by the scientific evidence. But the 2 to 3% of papers that reject the consensus, consensus are all over the map, even contradicting each other. The Galileo example is also instructive, Nucatelli points out. The father of observational science championed the astronomical model that the Earth and other planets in our solar system go around the Sun a view that was eventually accepted almost universally as the truth. If any of the contrarians were a modern-day Galileo, he would present a theory that's supported by the scientific evidence and is not based on method methodological errors. Such a sound theory would convince scientific experts and a consensus would begin to form a new one. So, I'm glad this was done. I'm glad... These uh, researchers took the time to go through those papers, carefully analyze it, and then write a paper debunking it. That's important. I'm glad this was done. Because they hope, now this won't shut up the likes of you know, people on certain uh, 
news outlet or politician and so on, but this is important that this was done as basically a, 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 as an STFU moment, basically. So, uh, kudos to them on a, a very well done uh, review. So, that's all I have for now. Thank you for your time. We'll talk soon. Hey folks, just a reminder to please subscribe and click the bell so you know when I drop a video. Please share my videos. Please tell others of my channel and of the work that I do. I also hope that you will consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash science talk with Jim Massa, where from time to time I upload videos there exclusively for my patron subscribers. Details in the description box below. Thanks.